So I grew up with animals on the Platte River, Nebraska, and I spent a lot of time in uh, the river bottom looking at animals with my dad, and that's what got me excited about uh, animals to begin with. And uh, their behavior is something I'm always interested in. I'm always learning. And I think one has to have a lot of passion, whether you're photogra whatever you're photographing. You know, you might want to be photographing uh, weddings, and maybe you're passionate about that. Or you might want to photograph landscapes or wildlife. But I think, you know, having a passion and, and an interest in a particular subject is what makes a difference for a photographer. Hi, my name is Tom Mangelson, and I live right on the edge of Teton Park. And I've been photographing here for about 38 years. And it's one of my favorite places in the world. I travel internationally. I've been to Africa, Serengeti, and Antarctica, and uh, this is home. And it's uh, obviously one of my favorite places to photograph, especially this time of year. In late fall and early spring when the bears are out. And fall when the elk are bugling and migrating. It's just a wonderful place to live. So some of the things I, I look for when I go out, uh, obviously, is the, the animal or bird or the subject. It could be a tree, it could be a rock, it could be the mountains themselves. But it's important to, to find um, uh, a good place, good background, and then look for good light, anticipate behavior. If an animal might be going from this place over here, or you move off a little bit, you get a better angle to the sunlight. Of course, composition is critical and uh, light is critical. So you have basically four or five things, your composition, light, subject, texture, uh, form, and all those things are important to get a good, good image. It's my favorite place in the whole Teton Park. Probably in the lower 48 actually, the Oxbow Bend, which has always got, has something. This time it has lots of migrating Canada geese and swans and bald eagle nests over in the river. Lots of times there's moose, beaver, muskrats, coyotes, otters, about everything's right here. I'm gonna shoot a few, uh, just uh, stitch panoramics. And this is such a nice landscape here. The more uh, a person learns about the subject, the better off you're going to be. And I spend a tremendous amount of time in the field watching animals' behavior, and pretty much they're consistent or they're repeatable. So I, I try to anticipate where the animal might be moving in the background that's moving in front of, and um, pre visualizing if this was a, a foggy day, or a snowy day, or a rainy day, or a sunshiny day, what, what would really make this particular subject or place special? And I think the more one learns how to pre-visualize and think about the possibilities or dream about an animal in a particular place, that's what, that's what turns me on. See that gesture there? It's so much with that light in your eye. So nice. They got the ears up. You hear something. Obviously one has to have a, a good kit or a, a variety of lenses. You don't have to a huge lens like this for wildlife, but, you know, that's a do it for a living. I, I uh, try to have the longest lenses I can afford, but you can have, uh, this is a 600 millimeter, but uh, you can use everything from a wide angle, a 24 to 120, uh, 70 to 200, or something like a 28 to 300, and a basic good camera that you can change lenses on, that's, that's all you really need. I use fast shutter speeds for flying birds, 500 of a second or more and for running animals, unless I want some motion blur, then I might use something like a 20th or 30th of a second, but that's all kind of technical stuff. But um, I think knowing one subject is, is the most important thing you can do. You know, you can read it in books, you can be out in the field, you can take workshops. Just watching, observing animals is hugely important to me. I found my bear's 399. Um, this is actually Blondie, which is not related, but it's in, always comes to the same area as 399 does. But I've followed 399 her, her cubs for 10 years now, and she's 21 years old, and we did a book called Pilgrim Creek. Um, Grizzlies of Pilgrim Creek, because this is Pilgrim Creek, and it's, she um, spends a lot of time here, especially in the spring and the fall. 
and she hibernates just in the Cocoa Creek Mountains in the wilderness in the wintertime. And so the cover of my book is actually at 399, walking down this road with her three triplets about five years ago, which was um, pretty fun. They were all walking side by side, and it became became the cover. So I was, I love these bears. And it just all you know brought. Probably 399 is the most popular bear ever, ever lived, well-known bear. Um, I don't know how many millions of people have seen her, but she's uh, she's great. She's had three sets of triplets. Um, she had one cub this last year, but it died and got hit by a car. So hopefully she'll come out next year with with another fourth set of triplets. It would be rare for an older female, but she's real healthy. and. Uh, so that's what we look forward to now. It's fall. It should be going into the end in probably a month or so. I, I think another thing that's really important for nature photographers or wildlife photographers is to uh, respect your subject and to uh, give them enough space. Um, usually that's 25 yards or more for big animals and uh, it always depends on the situation but the subject is the most important, so you always feel better if you know that you didn't scare a subject off of a kill or a bird off of a nest, and I think that makes every, everything more palatable and more uh, um, satisfying for an image when you get one to hang on your wall. Beautiful profile there. The most important thing is to find a nice background. You see, see a nice animal, and you find out, anticipate where it might move or you might move to get the better background. So the best times for photography in, in general are the uh, what we call the magic hour, the hours around sun, sunrise and sunset. And with the new digital equipment, you can shoot almost in the dark. So it's given all, all of us uh, opportunities to shoot pictures we weren't able to uh, five or 10 years ago. Um, but you can also find really great subjects and make great images uh, when the weather's bad. Don't stay in a house or your motel room if it's rainy or snowy because those are oftentimes the best times to to photograph wildlife. To see some of the opportunities I've had and for maybe some inspiration in your own work, uh, stop in my gallery in Jackson, it's called Mangelson's Museum of Nature. And um, go to my website, which is mangelson.com. Uh, you'll see the kinds of pictures that I've been taking in Greater Yellowstone for almost 40 years.